Ukrainian history contains many tragic and heroic pages. In various difficult times, women had to often protect their families and become warriors on the battlefields for the sake of national dignity and the bright future of Ukraine. The peculiarities of the historical life of the Ukrainian people were determined by the peculiar position of a woman in society, which is somewhat surprising for foreigners because of their independence, education and ability to perform men's work. And how a Ukrainian woman suffered during the terrible wars and troubles that came to the Ukrainian land. For a long time, Soviet historiography concealed the problem of women's experience, focusing its attention primarily on the heroines of the front and rear. At the same time, those pages that did not fit into the heroic narratives of the revolutionary struggle or great victory remained beyond the realms of the research that was conducted by historians and other academicians in those years. It was believed that the main goal in war is victory. After all, combat is the duty of every man. Frankly speaking, this is a battle and you're on the front. But if we look at the experience of the Second World War, women were just about everywhere. They were in the zones of hostilities and they participated in various resistance movements. Those of Soviet partisans, the Ukrainian insurgent army and the Red Army, along with the men, they drove tanks into battle. There were military doctors and communications workers. After all, this was the everyday life and survival in the occupied cities and villages. In general, no matter what thing we talk about, military captivity, the Holocaust or forced labor, women were the largest group. Today the little-known page in history is the participation of Ukrainian women in the First World War, which opened up new windows of opportunity for them and allowed them to show their identity. Olena Stepanov was the first Ukrainian woman to become an officer in the Ukrainian Galician Army. She led a unit of 30 women in the Ukrainian Legion of the Sichovi Strelci, Sich Marksmen, who fought in the Austro-Hungarian Army. This unit was distinguished in its battles against the Russian troops near Makivka Hill. Many women during the First World War worked as field nurses. The great historic tragedy for Ukraine was the Holodomor of 1932 to 1933. Women's experience of those times is often reduced to the description of suffering and losses. Ukrainian women truly experienced the horrors of war and tragedy. But as evidenced by the numerous memories of eyewitnesses, not all women were passive and helpless victims of historical circumstances. Having gotten into a situation of legalized violence, many women showed courage and perseverance in defending the interests of their families. Traditionally, women in Ukrainian families were in charge of food, so they were particularly active and resisted when the enemy tried to ransack food for their family. This was exactly what sparked the so-called women's rebellions, which swept over almost the entire territory of Ukraine. For example, according to the head of the Ukrainian Association of Women's History Researchers, Oksana Kiss, in Zhitomyr, women made up nearly 70% of the participants of such actions. To corroborate this assertion, the researcher offered us the following historic facts. In the Vinitsa region, the local authorities periodically reported the following cases. In one of the villages, a throng of 150 people, mostly women, seized a sugar beet field. In another village, a group of 300 young women attempted to seize a collective farm on which corn was grown. Or they attacked administrative buildings or the home of the head of the collective farm, threatening him with destruction, violence and demanding food for their families. It is clear that the forces were unequal. Even the most desperate resistance of women could not stop the powerful machinery of collectivization. Many protesters were punished and some were killed. The experience of using women in the army was familiar to the Bolsheviks since the Civil War. And in the 1930s, when the USSR was preparing for war, it was constantly declared that Soviet women had received equal rights with men. As such, they had the right to engage in shooting, ride on horses and motorcycles and study in aviation schools and train in parachute jumping. This was exactly the image of a militant woman which Nazi Germany actively used while preparing for the war against the USSR. A Red Army woman or a Bolshevist woman was such a terrible image that showed the inhuman nature of this new power, this Bolshevik ideology, which takes away all the female virtues from women. Already in the 1930s, when Nazi Germany planned its offensive towards the East to conquer new territories, Drang nach Osten, 
These images of women appeared in German propaganda magazines. A female image next to a Jewish Bolshevik. A female image was an example of such a terrible enemy that cannot be re-educated. It was impossible to hold a dialogue with them. All one had to do was kill them right there on the spot. So during the war, the attitude towards female soldiers on the part of the enemy was extremely cruel. Already in June of that year, several army orders were issued for the killing of women wearing military uniforms. Later, it was decided to send female prisoners of war to the German concentration camp Ravensbrück. Not everyone was able to withstand the stringent camp regime. Those who survived were accused of treason at home. For example, there's the story of Yevgenia Klem, who was the initiator and active participant of the resisting group at the Ravensbrück camp. She returned to Odessa and in 1951 she was fired from her job at the Odessa University because she was a captive. Without a family and some kind of moral support, she committed suicide. It became unexpected for university employees when in the 1950s Clem's friends from Poland and Germany came to Odessa looking for her. According to their stories, the university staff later found out what a remarkable person their workmate was. In the years of the Holocaust, the fate of Jewish women as well as the entire Jewish community in Ukraine was a horrific tragedy. According to the anti-Semitic ideology of Nazism, all Jews were condemned to extermination and only because of their nationality. During the occupation of Ukraine from 1941 to 1944, almost all Jews who were in the occupied territory, about 1.5 million people, were liquidated. Only those who were lucky enough to be evacuated and those who, while risking their lives, were saved by Ukrainians survived. The most horrible were stories when a woman, still gainfully employed, was allowed to survive. At the same time, she was forced to watch how her children and her infirm parents were killed. The most famous story is about Dina Pronicheva in Kiev. She was saved, but her husband was shot. Her parents were shot, but she managed to escape from Babin Yar. Her children were raised by strangers and they lived in an orphanage because she could not save them and could not support them. She survived the drama, witnessing this horrible tragedy and at the same time she had to face her own personal tragedy, how to live on. Of course, those who remained in occupation as a rule did not choose their fate and could not choose it. And this experience of daily survival had to be overcome somehow. Often women stayed with their children, with their old parents. It was necessary to feed the children. Since the government could not protect them, they had to somehow find a way to live. Both this everyday experience and various experiments show the true face of the war much more clearly. One of the first ones who started talking about the fate of a woman in those days was the playwright and writer Alexander Dovzhenko. Working as a military correspondent, he saw women struggling with the grief that came to them. In his diary he wrote, the broad topic is Ukrainian women and war. Who put on their shoulders more grief, cruelty, disgrace and violence? It was then that the scenario of his film Ukrainian Fire was born. He unexpectedly noticed and wrote down that people are dying. When men die, they cause all this mess, and they're suffering. And in this sense, this is normal. You yourself are involved in this collision. But when women and children die, this is not normal. This is why his soul begins to cry in Ukrainian fire. And in the diary, there are also a lot of stories in the context of his creativity with unexpected sympathy for women. The activity of the participants in the National Liberation Movement, which swept Western Ukraine, was connected with a constant risk to life. In the activities of the OUN, as well as in other national movements, girls and women were not excluded from the sphere of attraction to struggle. 
The fact is that they were used as communicators, who would not be the first people that the enemy might have suspicious about. There were women and children. In the extensive descriptions of the functions of a participant in the National Liberation Movement, an ordinary person often gets observed and lost in their daily experiences and cares, needs and desires, which were not considered heroic and were in fact secondary in the struggle for the Ukrainian state. The true names of people were not disclosed in the underground. And only after 60 years the true name of a girl under the pseudonym Nadia became known. It was Halina Kuzmenko, the Holodomor, the Great Terror, World War II, the UPA struggle were her destiny. She was born in Chernihiv in 1922. When she was 11 years old, her entire family died from the Great Famine. Her mother and two brothers. Her father died in the Gulag concentration camps. The girl was rescued by her relatives from the Donbass. Then destiny took Halina to Halichina in western Ukraine. In Ivano from Kivsk, the girl joined the OUN underground. The Czechists captured the girl in 1946. Halina was tortured by the KGB and was sentenced to 15 years in the Vorkut Correctional Labor Camp and was deprived the right to return home for five years. After she was released in 1957, she started a family and lived to see an independent Ukraine, for which she fought and was tortured in camps. In her last years, the former underground Nadia lived in Kyiv until 2000. The end of the Second World War did not bring relief to Ukrainian women. The Soviet government quickly forgot about their heroic deeds. Women's heroism in the war was not widely praised. After all, this was supposed to be a logical manifestation of the gratitude of the Soviet government for emancipation thanks to communism. The authorities felt discomfort and were even ashamed that they could not protect women. Indeed, in a relatively patriarchal society, as it was in the Soviet Union during the late Stalinist years after the war, there is always a rollback to conservative values. It was uncomfortable that the state not only did not protect women, but also forced them to go to battle as backups and work on different fronts. So they ostensibly tried to veil their guilt, claiming that the state and the army were not ready. For this reason, there was a need to mobilize significant female resources. The fact that she earned military awards, had to take the burden of the work on her shoulders and support her family did not matter to anyone, then the war ended and we returned to such a traditional societal life. There were many forms of work that women were hired to do. Women who worked in the mines did not receive any pension payouts, monetary compensation or even payments in kind for their hard labor. These elementary factors were not even included in their employment history. And even despite the fact that these women sacrificed their health while engaging in such hard labor and restoration work, they did not have the right to at least some material compensation. After the war, political repressions were re-emerging, which did not spare women either. We often think that the most horrible Stalinist repressions were in 1937. Indeed, the highest number of people incarcerated in the Gulag was in 1949, not in 1937. Despite nationality, all who disagreed with the system were sent to this prison camp. Women made up a significant part of the prisoners. Those who were evicted were resettled. Those who did not behave well during the occupation or in military captivity and those who said something after the war that did not fit into the vision of Soviet ideologists were incarcerated and the police were informed of such facts.
The complex and contradictory picture of everyday life in the extraordinary historical circumstances has changed the well-established life of Ukrainian women and their everyday rhythm, redefined their system of values, their world outlook, their spheres of activity and has provided them with new social roles. Two world wars, revolutions, the Holodomor, Soviet power and occupation. Not so long ago, those events were perceived as something far-fetched. But now, in an undeclared war, men and women are once again forced to defend the freedom and independence of Ukraine, with arms in their hands, to carry the wounded from the front line and to live in occupation. The tragic and heroic destiny of women in those times helps us better understand the motivation of our compatriots to oppose the modern armed aggression of Russia against Ukraine.